to put you in doubt, to put you in these situations that you feel disconnected, you feel ashamed, you feel lost, you feel not worthy. It's all part of your test. You have to go to these phases. It's a part of your path. to demonstrate that you have, that you're hanging in there. You have to demonstrate that to God, that you're worthy to receive the final real, realization. You have to hang in there and keep going forward. Not only when everything is good, but during the dark. your own darkness, because that's where you're going through. And you see this world outside. It's our darkness. But look through it. It's got no power over you. When you come to your heart, any moment, Remember one thing, it doesn't matter how insignificant you appear to be, your physical body, your looks or whatever. You're old, you're out of shape, you're da 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 da, you don't have money or da da da. Don't worry about that. Bring your attention to here, come back to your heart. and feel the love that is here. Not superficial love, not that the love that you're mentally telling yourself it's love, 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 no. Quiet your mind and get away from your mind and come here into the present moment, into the vastness of Her Majesty, the Supreme Lord, Supreme God, here in this moment. Come back into this moment without your story. And look at your heart and look at the love that you have. Look how much love you have. You're full of love. You're just not put maybe exactly in a position in your life to be able to spread it the way you want to. But you have a lot of love. Don't let these thoughts that you're not worthy to clutter your mind and take you, create doubts in you that you're off the path. You're not off the path. You're very close to the target. When you think you have lost it and you're off, whatever it is, whatever addictions you have, that you're lost into your addictions. In that moment, remember one thing, that you're very close to your target. At the moment that you think you're completely lost and far away, Use that as a beacon that you're very close. That's a part of your contract. You entered into this dimension with that contract.
You are a part of an enlightened race. You come from the land of love. Your entrance into this dimension by itself is an indication that you are carrying the torch of love. By being born, because you have love inside you. Tell me you don't have love inside you. Tell me this. Don't you love? Don't you love your family, your children, your friends? Don't you have love for your animals? Tell me you don't have love. I know you have love. Tremendous amount of love. You haven't found a way of channeling it yet. In the way you think you should. But look how much love you give me. What have I done to be worthy of your love? You give me love all the time. You have love. That's your power. I want you to recognize that. I want you to realize that you do have this love inside you. For that, you don't have to be a spiritual teacher. You don't have to be a guru. You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be a doctor. You're fine where you're at, whatever you're doing. Stay in your heart and stay in that love. First, by loving yourself and not judging yourself for the way you are. That's your number one task. Secondly, know your power. And every time anyone that you touch, people you care for, you like, from any class of the world, anything, whether they're working for you, they're, are your peers, they're your children, family, friends, in a store, someone is a janitor, whatever it is, exercise that love. Exercise your power. Put your hand on someone's shoulder and say, thank you for your hard work. Somebody's a janitor working, cleaning the floors in a university or in a doctor's office or something. Just walk up to them and say, thank you for your hard work. You're in a bus, you're leaving the bus, tell the bus driver, walk up to them, look into their eyes and say, thank you for serving. Exercise your power. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to appear significant. Again, you don't have to be a spiritual teacher or a healer or a shaman. No, that's an idea. It's bullshit. There's nothing I do, you don't do. None of it is more significant. These are ideas. 
I don't find myself any spe more special than you or better. But I exercise my power because I recognize it. Exercise your power. That is no one can take it away from you. The pandemic, the government, the new rules, the Illuminati, no one can take that away from you. You see that? You see what you got? Yes? You see it? You recognize that? Are you with me? Are you here? Exercise your power. And your power is love. In however insignificant it may appear to be, don't be fooled by that because the entire thing is being run by God. God is the only thing there is. Never ever doubt that. Never. God is running through you, running through everything. Come back to that. This is what is meant to be realized now. This is the new race. This is what we want to be born into. We are being born into a new race, a new way of being. Our new way of being is to have God in our life at any moment, every moment, not in a belief way, in an experiential way of experiencing the presence of Her Majesty in every moment of your life without an idea of what's gonna happen next, yet in full trust. That's the birth of the Superman. Kim, you ask a question, my dear sister. You can unmute yourself. Hello, Zaratrusta. Hello. <laughs> you look good. Thank you. I, this is because I have reinvented myself. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> you, know, you shine. Before I teach that, I had to demonstrate it, that there are ways of regenerating that you can actually rebuild yourself with a brand new body and brand new skin and, and way of being. So I had to demonstrate that before I can offer a workshop. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so my question to you is that at what point in your life did you completely surrender, let go, and trust that the divine will provide when you go into this work full-time, dedicated to serve humanity? So without any expectation, projection, anticipation, and how you will be provided. So how did you go about trusting and letting go of all these thinking that we have it all planned out, that we have it under control, we know what to expect in the future, you know? So that is my question to you is, how were you able to completely surrender trust and let go? The, um... This is a wonderful question. I, uh, I've had five near-death experiences and um, um, I don't know if you knew about it or not, or I may have uh, shared it, but the, one of my um, 
some, somehow, okay, to be honest with you, the answer is that it never ends. The answer to this question is that it's not that at one particular moment in my life, I realized this and then ever since then, I've been trusting existence 100% every moment of life. Mm -hmm. If I tell you that, that's a lie. Fear, doubt arises at times. And it, it's always puts you in a, in a place of a kind of like, God wants to keep me honest in a way because I can stray away. And it's always challenges come. And with those challenges, doubt and fear comes. And there's moments of, oh my God, how are we gonna do this? Especially in a financial arena. That's an area that I'm always being challenged financially. As honest as I can be. And there are many times that the entire endeavor appears that it's gonna fall apart because I can no longer afford it. Because I put everything I have into this, everything. I have no savings. I don't save anything. And I pour everything back into it. And it's always on a state of fluke. So it's always a challenge that my baby, my passion, this can fall apart and sink. So there's always like that sense, that feeling there. And, and that keeps me honest in a way, honest, not as far as being honest to people, as far as like keep you intact of forces you to come back to this place because it's always coming back into this place of, huh, what can I lose? It's like, what can I lose? I can lose the image of a successful or semi-successful spiritual teacher who's holding his com composure, but that can go down, it could be lost. So it's like, can you, who would I be if that is lost? And it's always like coming back to this place that myself, that which is here always comes back but there's always this moment of fear and worry of oh my god oh my god what what what's going to happen it's the mind and that's what really keeps me connected with you guys because i can share it and teach it to you because I experience it and I feel it. And it's not coming from a place of being so far away and distant from it of ignorance or being arrogant into, oh, trust, blah, blah, blah. No, I, I experience it because I'm I also being challenged like all of you. The difference is that 
although my nervous system experiences it, I never buy into it. My freedom is not being compromised whether I maintain this status of being a teacher or financially where I'm at or if I'm homeless. My freedom is not being compromised. I am free. Physically, you may be uncomfortable and you have to compromise, but the internal freedom is not touched. And that is what I wish to share with you. Yes, that was deep and profound. And we thank you for being so authentic, open and honest with us. Thank you. You know, like all of you, I have my own desires, wishes, places I like to go to, things I like to reach, like everybody else, no different. I just happen for whatever reason that the source, Her Majesty, for whatever reason, that I don't know if I did anything to earn it, comes through me. But it's not personal. The power that comes through me is not something that I own. It's not mine. So as long as I can financially afford it, I will continue be teaching and sharing, sharing it with all of my brothers and sisters from all over the world. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And uh, just to share with you that uh, this retreat is being uh, supported by your donations. So if you feel like contributing, we appreciate it. You can go on my website. No. Namaste.